All right, hello everyone. Thank you for calling in to today's virtual discussion on telecommuting. Uh, my name is Katie Hoyle and I am the program specialist for learning services at CSPS. Um, so before we get started, I just wanted to go over just a few things. Um, the first thing is that this will be recorded. Um, we'll have this available to all of you um, to view on your own um, shortly after this discussion. Um, next thing, so is just a few tips on using Zoom. Um, so once we open it up for discussion towards the end, um, you can mute and unmute your microphone using the far left controls. You can also turn on your camera if you'd like. Um, you can view the participant list. So that pops out a screen that shows you who is called in. Um, and this is where you can also raise your hand if you have a question. Um, if you raise your hand, then I'll be sure to make sure we have time and call on you. Um, and then the chat feature is really great as well. Uh, you can chat with and make sure it's set to everyone so you can ask questions. Um, if you don't feel like speaking up, you can just put them in there um, or you can comment on anything you'd like as we go through the presentations. Um, so before I turn it over to Sebastian, we're going to do a quick uh, Mentimeter. So let me open up. One moment. There we go. Um, so if everybody can um, open up a browser or have their phones out um, and go to www.menti.com and then use the code 300439. people a few more minutes. All right, so Let's go to the first question. So the first question we have is, do you currently telecommute? Um, either full time, three to four days per week, one to two days per week, a few times a month or never? We don't want to unmute. All right, so mostly never, kind of all over. Great. All right, so the next question we have, um, what benefits come with telecommuting? Um, we have, there's a comment box, you can just type in whatever you'd like. Flexibility, it's a great one. Work-life balance is very important. The traffic, definitely nice. Commute time. Right. These are all great ones. Lower cost. Awesome. All right, and then the next one is probably another one. Social distancing, yes, very important, very timely right now. All right. Um, what difficulties come with telecommuting? Communication. Yeah, 
Yeah, communication is definitely a huge one. Access issues, technical connectivity, distractions. Yes. Bandwidth, technology. Yeah, these are all great ones. So Sebastian will be going over quite a few of these um, in the next moment or so. Supervision, yeah, great. Well, thank you all. Um, so Sebastian, um, I think we're ready for you to share yours. All right, thanks Katie and yeah. good afternoon everyone. Um, so I'm glad that uh, we are doing this because uh, telecommuting has actually been a topic of conversation for um, state regulators for quite a while. And we never thought that um, uh, a virus would uh, push us all into this uh, situation, but evidently it has uh, done this to us. So um, Katie and I thought that we would just uh, put something together here real quick for you all to kind of um, learn and, and have an opportunity to discuss. Um, and hopefully you all can see my, uh, my screen now. Um, but um, to start, I don't, I, I, I don't mean to sound like a, like a Federal uh, Reserve examiner or presenter, but uh, when it comes to telecommuting, I must tell you that my views are my views. The, the views expressed are mine and mine alone. Um, learned over 14 years of uh, working from home for, for CSBS. So uh, these are not necessarily the views of CSBS, but they're certainly mine uh, over the last uh, 14 years. As some of you may know, I've been at CSBS for 19 years. And so it's hard to think that now um, 14 of them have been uh, in a sort of telecommuting uh, uh, environment. Um, but I, I do want to go over a few critical elements that I have learned over time and that I've also shared with, with many uh, of you and, and, and others uh, that seem to make sense for, for everyone to kind of uh, think through and, and, and hopefully apply to, to your own situation. Um, and to be clear, there are no uh, one size fits all. There is no silver bullet out there. Telecommuting is a, it's a, a very particular arrangement that everyone involved has to sort of um, um, assess and, and figure out what, uh, what works best for them. But I, I don't think I'll surprise anyone by saying that, in my opinion, the most critical element of successful telecommuting is trust. And uh, it really, it works both ways. It's trust um, as far as uh, the supervisor, the supervisor who needs to trust that uh, their employees, uh, that the employees are going to uh, do the work, that they're going to be diligent, professional about getting things done, getting things done well and in a timely manner. On the employee side, it's also important that the employee trusts the supervisor that there's not going to be too much micromanaging strictly because of the the arrangement um, that um, because there is a physical um, there is no um, there's no physical presence um, sometimes a supervisor might wonder well I wonder what he or she is doing I wonder if things are getting done and then the employee can ask him, can be asking himself or herself the same thing. I wonder if my supervisor is, is um, trying to micromanage me and figure out what I'm up to, et cetera, et cetera. So it's important to create and protect that trust between the two parties. Um, and how to do that is actually pretty simple. It's about communication. It's about making sure that from the supervisor standpoint, um, you set clear directions, uh, clear expectations, deliverables, timelines, overly communicate with the, uh, the, the, the employee on what needs to be done, when, how, et cetera. On the employee standpoint, from the employee standpoint, um, it's important to value that trust, to protect it, and to be accountable to uh, what's expected of you. So. Um, I have lived in a situation where I have, I have a supervisor who was not here 
and I have employees who are not here either. And so I have been, uh, I've had to deal with this sort of two-way trust uh, uh, um, situation that I think is really the most critical element because if you don't trust someone in the office, probably shouldn't trust them when they're remote and vice versa. If you trust someone in the office, why shouldn't you trust them when they're remote? So it really goes both ways. And, and I, I think to me is the most important element of telecommuting. The second one, and it ties in a little bit with the expectations and deliverables and the timeline is to be really organized uh, when working from home. And um, I sort of always paraphrase a, a famous um, college basketball coach and said, failing to plan is planning to fail. And um, so it's important being in a sort of a different work environment, being in your home, that um, you focus on being very organized and having a routine. Having a routine uh, to start your day, having a routine when you finish your day, making sure that you always have an eye on your schedule, that you are able to uh, meet the deadlines, participate in various meetings, uh, focus on the tasks at, at hand, get things done. I'm personally, is a, I'm, a, I'm a list maker, so I start my day making a list of, of what I need to accomplish today, uh, things that I need to kind of think about and uh, make progress towards. Um, I tend to also focus on, um, from, a, from a, a schedule standpoint, uh, small increments to be very focused on the particular task and then also uh, taking, taking some time for, for, for a break. Get off my, you know, get on my feet, take a walk, get some air, then get back to work. Uh, it's important to, uh, to, to have that routine. And, um, and the same thing at the end of the day, usually end up the day thinking about what has been done, what I may or may have, uh, what I may have missed and what I really need to focus on the next morning to really get it done. Um, so that, that the importance of, ha of having a routine is, I think having a routine is very important. The, uh, the third aspect to me is visibility and engagement. And the reason I'm saying that is because uh, out of sight, out of mind is not necessarily, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's a cliche, but it is at times true. And uh, in this type of work environment, um, because you, there is no, uh, there is a, a barrier, I guess, in terms of uh, between people, it's important to almost over, overdo it from a visibility and engagement standpoint. So that means um, touching base regularly with your team, either via uh, instant messaging or phone calls, video conferencing, et cetera. Um, if there are uh, projects that uh, your agency might be taking on, it's a great opportunity for someone to, to, you know, who works remotely to be involved with another group of colleagues to, 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 uh, to work on something together and, and, and uh, deliver value to the agency. So um, the vis visibility and engagement part, I think is, is, is one that is, is as critical as the other two uh, because you don't want to feel like, well, I'm, I'm away from, from people. So, I may just be, uh, you know, again, out of sight, out of mind, and you have to fight that. Um, so that's one that is, is important to, uh, to, to keep in mind. Um, the, the fourth element, and that's really, that's one that actually I, I, I have most, the most fun with, is embracing technology. And um, I can tell you, having, been, having, work, having worked from home for the last 14 years, technology then and now is night and day. Uh, the things that we're now able to accomplish uh, working from home, essentially, or telecommuting uh, with technology, mobile devices, uh, webcams, uh, sharing and collaboration platforms, um, just you now have the ability to just do, to do just about anything you would have done in the office, but in a, in a digital format. It also, and that's been an, an, a goal of mine for, for a long time, it's an opportunity to basically digitize everything you do. Go and completely paperless. And it's, um, it's, actually, um, it's actually easier than it sounds uh, because it's, and again, it ties in with the, with the organization. 
being organized in a schedule and you also need to be organized on your, on your devices. So having folders, subfolders, making sure that your documents are well organized, everything is easy to find, easy to share. Um, again, light years ahead of where we were uh, even 10 years ago. Uh, where you know iPhone barely came out and the and, and now everybody has one of those and everybody can FaceTime everybody can use Skype or Teams or other other um, uh, uh, software to uh, to connect but embracing technology is key and actually isn't an, that's also an opportunity for people to um, to volunteer and be sort of the 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 experimenter the the, the pilot tester uh, on any sort of new technology that, that agencies might want to roll out for, for their, for their uh, personnel. And then the last one, and it's probably the most potentially controversial one, is the work-life balance. And, or as I call it in my situation, the work-life integration. Because it's really not about balance. For me, it's not about balancing work and life. It's really because my office is my home and my home is my office. It's bringing the two together and making sure that I take care of everything I need to take care of, both at work and in my personal life, all in basically 24 hours. And that can be a challenge and that can be difficult. Uh, I still think that in order to be able to do that well, either whether you integrate or you balance both, uh, having a dedicated workspace so that you have your, your um, you can draw the line uh, between what you do for work and what you do uh, outside of work. Um, and again, there, there's no one size fits all. I think everybody has to kind of get a feel for what can be done and, uh, and how to make this work for them. But um, um, that is very much an iterative process and that you learn as you go and you make adjustments. Um, and again, it's important that, that you always sort of communicate with your colleagues and supervisors, et cetera, making sure that everybody knows, everybody's on the same page. Um, the important question to ask on, the, on that particular item though, is, um, is working from home or telecommuting a perk, a privilege, or, in this day and age, is it becoming something that we all need to do or we all need to know how to do because it's gonna be, become part of, of, it's gonna become a must have if you want to be able to uh, attract and retain a, a particular workforce. And that's a discussion that's ongoing because for a long time it was viewed as, as a privilege, as a special treatment and um, with, uh, new generations coming into the workplace, uh, it's absolutely something that, uh, that is considered. Do I get to work from home or not? And I don't mean I, but the, the younger generation wants that flexibility, wants to be uh, trusted to, to, manage, uh, to manage that. And a, an organization that does not allow for that may not be able in the future, may not be able to hire uh, uh, um, the, the level of talent that they would otherwise uh, get if they offer that uh, that particular arrangement. So um, I promised Katie I was going to speak for about 10 to 12 minutes and then really the point of this is for you all to share your experiences as, as, uh, as um, examiners and to hopefully learn from each other. I hope I shared some interesting um, elements there. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have on, on that. Uh, but otherwise, I, I would really like to uh, turn it over to you all for um, any questions. And so, Katie, do we have uh, uh, a... Yeah, so, um, I talked to, Tr to Tracy Bergman from Iowa. Um, he's going to quickly just give some of his um, experiences uh, with telecommuting. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Katie kind of asked me to talk about what we do here in Iowa. I've been working for the Iowa Division of Banking now for 21 years, and we've been telecommuting the whole time that I've been here. And like Sebastian said, over time, it's really evolved from to having paper documents at home and just doing them in Excel worksheets and stuff at home versus now to using Google Meetings and, and Microsoft Planner, Microsoft Teams, and, and OneDrive and other collaborative tools to allow us to do everything we need to do remotely. So we only have a, a main office in Des Moines that houses our uh, support staff, our IT people, our bank analysts, and our senior management team. Our 50 field examiners all work from home. And um, as far as what uh, policies and things that we've got in place that would help 
uh, govern what we do from a telework standpoint. We actually have two written documents to kind of address this, but um, I jotted down the notes of what things that Sebastian said. And if you could see my screens here, Sebastian, you'd be real proud of me. My first thing here says, number one rule, trust our staff. So uh, we, we feel like we've hired good people, uh, ones that are really hardworking and good at what they do. So we have to trust that people are gonna get the stuff done that they're supposed to get done. We don't micromanage them. We don't worry about clock in, clock out. And as long as they're getting the work done, we're, we're satisfied. Uh, and then the, sometimes I know people are like, well, how do you know that people are doing what they're supposed to be doing at home? Well, for the field, everybody has kind of an expectation of how much work you can get done in the amount of time that you have. If you show up to a bank and you don't have your work done, people are gonna notice. So the, the field almost self polices that and uh, helps prevent people from taking advantage of it. If we would have somebody that takes advantage of it, then we'd treat it like any other disciplinary uh, issue we'd have to address is if somebody's not uh, getting the work done, then we have the right to take the teleworking away from them or um, other disciplinary action, but we just address it. I'd say of the 21 years I've been here, we've had uh, a lot, a lot of people uh, working uh, this way and we probably only had one or two instances where we had somebody that maybe wasn't doing the work that they were expected to do. So it's, it's worked out really well. So I did mention we had two documents. We have this teleworking agreement that's here that essentially says, like Sebastian said, you have to have a dedicated space to work free of distractions and also have the ability to uh, lock up and keep documents, especially for the bank safe. So for me as a supervisor, I've got a standing file cabinet that's right off to my left here that I can uh, lock everything up in. All of our field staff have a two drawer locking cabinet that I have over to my right here that we can also uh, lock stuff up in. So that's a, a big concern for us, the banks, and everybody else that's providing us this confidential information. The second written document that we have is this uh, flexible work schedule policy that we have that talks about a credit hour policy and everything. But what it really boils down to is that you can start and stop your day anytime you want. You just have to make sure you get your work done and you need to be available for everybody between 9 and 3 p.m. during the day. That's what we call our, our core work hours. So that way we can make sure that people are able to get information from each other, communicate with each other if need be. We know that everybody on staff will be available during those times. Uh, if you have a, a work schedule where you tend to get up earlier in the morning or, or work later in the afternoon or whatever, the people are really good about communicating that to their supervisor and other people on their staff so that you always know when you can get a, a hold of people um, on your crew. As far as what I like most about uh, telecommuting, not traveling, not having to dress up. Normally I'd be wearing my hat, but um, Katie made me you know, take a shower and get dressed up today for this. Um, I get to sleep in a little bit longer. I get to attend school, uh, school activities for my kids. So the flexibility, uh, I know that several people commented earlier on Katie's question about saving the uh, commute time. And when I go to the office, it's a, uh, about two hours and 15 minutes for me to get there. So that's four and a half hours uh, on the road that I could be doing something else. So now instead of me going to Des Moines as much for as many meetings as I have, I'm able to use uh, Google Meets and do web conferencing and spend that uh, four and a half hours I've been on the road actually getting some work done. So it's uh, more productive. Uh, as far as things that maybe I don't like about uh, telecommuting, and this is really rare and probably unique to me within the division is that uh, I do a lot of training and at times I need to print uh, documents for case studies or exercises and other things that we're doing. And my printer here can handle a lot of stuff, but if I'm gonna be printing several hundred pages of documents, I don't have that big commercial printer photocopier next to me. But I am networked into the office, so I can print that stuff off from my office here, get to the office, pick it up, and then take it to wherever I need to do the training event. So it's still available, even though it's not sitting in the room here with me. As far as whether or not uh, telecommuting affects my collaboration process, uh, I don't think that it, it does at all. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we use SharePoint, uh, OneDrive, Google Meets, Microsoft Planner, is something we're starting to look at, Microsoft Teams. All these tools and everything are great for us being able to do what we need. And we do have those physical touch points where we'll have crew meetings and other things where we still get together in person. But um, our committee meetings and a lot of other things, uh, my monthly uh, meetings with the management team uh, and other supervisors, 
is all done virtually uh, with the office uh, through Google um, Meet. So um, I, I feel like we're pretty good at doing the collaboration. Uh, as far as uh, what do I do if we have technical difficulties, I would say that's extremely rare. I've had a case where uh, the um, utility company says we're gonna be shutting off the power for two hours during a day because we're uh, putting in a bypass just uh, north of my house here. Well, I either take vacation, work on something that I can just work on my laptop where I don't need the internet, which is usually the case, or I can go work any place else I can get an internet connection. So we're extremely flexible and mobile on where we are able to work. Um, obviously, uh, a lot of people wonder about training. How do you train people when you're telecommuting? We either meet people in uh, libraries, so we got public spaces where it's free. I've had uh, employees come over to my house to work at the a table, or we go to the office and meet in one of the conference rooms. Uh, just an example, I had an employee that was working a uh, loan review remotely. He was sitting at my table, going through the credit files. I was working on other things that I need to work on. He got done with the credit, and then I was able to log on to the same system, look through the documents, check, check his work, answer questions and things, and do that all in basically the privacy of my house. So he feels like he's able to ask questions, doesn't feel like he's asking anything that others might, you know, wonder why he doesn't know that already. Um, and it's uh, not with free of distractions too of, of other people and, and bankers and stuff as well. So how, getting on that point, I guess, how do you minimize distractions? Well, I think going back to what Sebastian said earlier, if you have a dedicated uh, workspace, I happen to have this office here. Uh, you probably haven't uh, picked up on this yet, but I have a wife, two kids, and a dog that'll bark if anybody rings the doorbell here at my house right now. Uh, but um, I find that uh, working from home, I'm actually probably able to get more done than when I'm in the office. Because when I'm in the office, somebody's always got to ask me a question, want me to work on something, want to talk about NCAA brackets, maybe not so much this year, but in most years. So there's usually a lot of side conversation that uh, distracts me from what I need to do. And when I'm at home, I'm able to um, stay focused on what I need to do. And at times, on rare occasions, I'll even send out an email and says, I need to do this. I'm ignoring email for the day. If you need something, call me on my cell phone. Uh, because the, everybody knows the email monster can distract you from what you need to get done. So sometimes you just need to get away from that as well. But um, hopefully that kind of gave you a good overview of what we're doing here. I'd be uh, interested in hearing what other people have to say and um, also available to answer any questions people might have. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tracy. Some great points. So um, now we're going to open it up to everybody else. So if you want to um, unmute yourself, um, feel free to turn your webcam on as well. Um, we'd love to hear what other states are doing and um, if you also have policies around telecommuting or if you have any questions for either Sebastian or Tracy. Does anybody have any, um, Tracy mentioned some of the tools that they use to help with collaboration and to make it easier while you're telecommuting. Does anybody else have any different tools that you might be using for this? Katie, maybe why people are uh, thinking about things to, to say or, or to bring up. Um, I could say in this current time too with the coronavirus, uh, we made a decision Monday morning to go 100% offsite with our exams. And because we've already been doing the telecommuting stuff, it's just basically, you know, easy, just a flip of a switch to say, stay out of the exams as much electronically from the banks as possible. And since we're already doing this, it wasn't really much of a change in the way we do things. I know when you had your first question, one of them was, uh, I think there was nine people on the call that don't do telecommuting at all. And I guess um, I'd be curious why they're not doing it uh, yet, or maybe what uh, concerns or challenges they have, or maybe uh, Sebastian, myself, and, and, and you could, or others could uh, help address those concerns or challenges. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so anybody that says that they don't telecommute um, right now, do you have any um, feedback on kind of why or kind of what are the 
um, the concerns that you guys have. Katie, I can see in the chat that uh, Wendy asked if there's any concerns regarding to cybersecurity. And uh, we're pretty fortunate we have our own internal IT department. We have five people on staff that help manage our own IT network. And uh, they don't have any concerns with us for working remotely at all. Uh, we have dual authentication and everything is set up. So I have a uh, app on my phone that I use to get a temporary mm -hmm. password, uh, just like you would an internet banking platform. So I, from a security standpoint, we don't have any concerns. Yeah. I know at CSBS, um, when we work remote, we have the um, two-factor authentication. We use the Duo, um, and it's super easy. You kind of just it pops up on your screen, and you just select that, yes, that's me who's trying to log in, um, and that really helps with the cybersecurity uh, concerns for sure. looks like some other tools. So it looks like um, Mike says they use Microsoft Teams, um, which is what we at CSBS have moved towards as well. Um, and then Skype and Box, which is both great as well. Thanks, Roberta. Katie, I don't know how many people use Microsoft Planner. This is actually something we just started using, but um, we, every month we have a regional manager uh, conference call or webcast like this. And we end up coming up with different tasks, like um, I need to sign people up for certain training events, or um, uh, we need to uh, provide a list of people that are really good at liquidity or whatever to mm -hmm. our independent. So we use Microsoft Planner as kind of a task manager where you can have all the individuals that are part of the group and you can put who's responsible for what, put a deadline, okay. and then people can check it off um, uh, when, the, when that task is done. So everybody has access to that planner and they can all see everybody has access to all the tasks? Yeah, whoever's in the group. So for awesome. that particular one, it's just the uh, regional managers and Shauna, our bank bureau chief, have access to that list. So we can also always keep track of it because I'm really bad about writing stuff down on pieces of paper and then trying mm -hmm. to figure out where this piece of paper went. And that's my to-do list sometimes. So we've tried to automate it as much as possible and put it online where it's there for everybody to see and we can help prioritize things that way too, if, if necessary. Yeah, there are a couple of interesting cool. questions there in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, Tracy, does Iowa allow staff to use their own computers or does the department provide the equipment? Yeah, the department provides uh, us with all the equipment we need. So we've got a laptop. I have two uh, monitors up here in, in front of me that I use every day. I've got a printer next to me. I've got scanners and um, uh, external monitors that I take to the bank. Uh, a number of other pieces of equipment up there, but everything's provided by the, the division. Yeah, and at CSBS, it's the same thing where we're, I mean, CSBS provides uh, the, the equipment. Um, although they are now experimenting with uh, virtual desktops, mm -hmm. so that, you know, those who would like to use, say, Mac computers can use that, and then there's a virtual, the CSBS virtual desktop uh, application on it. Uh, but that's, that we're still in the sort of the pilot phase of, of this at, at this point. Uh, there was another question from Mike. Uh, do you ever have any staff who are resistant to teleworking? And if so, do you have any tips with handling their concerns? It's an interesting question. We've never had that problem before. And um, I think, Sebastian, one of the things you said on number five on whether or not uh, the work-life balance or work-life integration, as far as whether or not uh, that's a perk or a must-have, Mm -hmm. We actually use it as a selling point to attract people uh, when we hire um, people. And right now we're in the middle of doing a culture value survey of our staff. And that by far is one of the biggest things that people enjoy is the ability to, to work from, from home and have that flexibility in their schedules. Um, so I, we haven't had anybody that's resistant to it. What we have had people resistant to is... In this telework agreement, it says that we have reserved the right to come in and inspect your workplace with like a 24 hours notice. And if you sign this document, then you're, some people are worried that we're gonna do it. We actually don't, we don't go out and audit people. We reserve the right to. Uh, but the other thing by signing this agreement is that we pay everybody $50 a month to go towards our internet service since so much of it is um, needed for the collaboration that we do online. I will say, uh we, we do have a, a staff member at CSBS on my team 
who uh, joined us a few years ago, and he was very concerned about teleworking because um, he felt that he was going to be um, he was going to feel iso isolated. He was used to working with others in the same same room, same office, etc. And he was concerned about feeling isolated. And and he actually told me that early on, and which was good. You know, it kind of goes back to one of my points about communicating or even over communicating. Uh, because then I kind of made sure that, okay, I need to make sure that I touch base with them every day to kind of talk through, you know, what needs to be done. And then, yeah, but we have, you know, short conversations, longer conversations, and also making sure that, that he's involved, that he's included in, in the meetings, et cetera, so that um, there's never a, a day that looks like, oh, I'm just going to be really on my own all alone. And, and so we were able to kind of mitigate that, that issue. Um, there is another question here. Uh, do you have any issues with employees that cannot work remotely because of certain job functions? Uh, for example, though, for instance, those examiners that help with walk-in complaints. So we have uh, four people in our office that are bank analysts and they monitor the exams, uh, in or monitor the banks in between exams, approve it, handle complaints and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, they have their their phone calls and everything can be forwarded to them when they're working from home. Right now under this particular situation, let's see today's Tuesday, so we only have maybe four people in our office. All of those people are, are working from home with the exception of one person. Under normal conditions, uh, they just work out a rotation to make sure that there, there's at least one or two people there to handle any walk-in uh, complaints. And that's pretty rare anyway. Um, we have had some interesting ones where somebody comes in and seems a little um, uh, not completely with it. So um, we've started to make sure that we're always having two people in the room in case somebody doesn't feel safe with the individual that, that walked in to, to complain. Uh, but we just manage that through uh, kind of a rotation of, of who's in the office and who's not. Okay. Are there other questions for, for us? And if you are, just don't forget to unmute yourself or use yeah, the chat. Yeah, we'd love to hear from other states and what your experiences have been. I know there was a few other people that work entirely um, remotely and maybe it was just the three of us, but um, uh, I don't know if there's other people that do uh, telecommuting that have certain successes or advices or some advice or something they'd want to share with the group as well. Yeah. This is Matt Harvey in Washington hey, Matt. Uh, calling in for Roberta. I, I don't have a lot of new information other than what you guys already mentioned, but I will add we've moved to 100% mandated work from home for all staff currently, obviously yeah. being that we're kind of the epicenter. Um, and so for us, we're lucky in our banking division because all of our field staff already work from home pretty consistently. Um, but we did have to kind of rush order some stuff for support staff that don't normally do that. Um, and we've gotten some uh, pretty good successes. One of the things we have is an IP soft phone functionality, which essentially allows you to get your desk phone um, routed to your laptop. And then you can take calls that way, which has kind of helped us. Um, you know, our main office has so many employees that only have a desk phone and no cell phone. Um, and so the way we field complaints or general correspondence, all of that done is through the hard lines in our main office. So that that's one piece of technology um, that I hadn't heard mentioned. You know, if you have staff that don't have cell phones, IP soft phone has worked pretty well for us. You do need a headset um, mm -hmm. for it to work very well, but that's a lot cheaper than a new iPhone in a monthly subscription. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Thanks for giving another question. Um, it says, Tracy, do you mind sharing the two documents that the staff are required to complete for teleworking? Yeah, Wendy, I just, uh, I'll uh, check with, um, uh, my supervisor, Shauna Shields, and as long as she doesn't have any issues with me sharing it, I can share it with uh, Katie, and then she can distribute it to the group. Okay. 
I should mention at CSBS uh, today, all staff members are working from home and um, we're doing, our IT group is doing uh, touch points every couple of hours with supervisors and others to make sure that there are, that there are no issues. And uh, actually learned a couple things in the process because we uh, we use uh, VPN to get into you know our you know network etc. And um, we learned a couple things about how many connections our in our original VPN could actually handle, and they saw that oh we could we could handle 50, and that's usually more than enough. But uh, on a day like today, or certainly the way things have been going on, and you know we're going to be uh, probably working from home for, for, the, for the next few weeks. Um, we were able to, IT just flagged that pretty quickly and, and, and increased our count to well over 200. So uh, all employees will be able to VPN in at the same time without, uh, without uh, you know, clogging the pipeline, I guess. So Maybe one thing to uh, uh, circle back to too would be addressing technical difficulties that uh, mm -hmm encounter because we have people that live all across the state and obviously the bandwidth that each individual has could be different. I mean, I have fiber, fiber optics here at my house, so I'm able to, um, you know, get everything that I need in a relatively quick manner. Uh, we do have one employee that lives kind of in a remote location in a rural area that I describe as him putting his little satellite on the top of the tallest tree outside of his house. Uh, but he's still able to do everything with ETS and, and um, not have uh, many problems with the speed that he has. If for some reason somebody would have difficulties with their internet for an extended period of time for whatever reason, our staff have uh, routers with um, air cards, Verizon air cards that they put in them to take to uh, the banks with them. And at times uh, somebody may take that home with them or whatever, so they can use that uh, if they're having challenges at home. Uh, but then they just bring it back to the bank next day so everybody can, can, can use those there as well. Yeah. Anybody else have any, anything to add? All right. Well, thank you so much, Tracy and Sebastian. You guys have anything you'd like to mention? Uh, no, just uh, thanks everyone for calling in. And certainly if you have any, uh, any questions that you um, just haven't thought of just yet, or if any, uh, any of you wanna share any uh, further insights, uh, go ahead and feel free to uh, text or email me or Katie and uh, we'll, uh, We'll uh, do our best to answer your questions or share your questions with the group. So, but thanks for thanks for taking uh, some time and uh, joining us, Tracy. Yeah, thanks I, for all your feedback. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I just add real quick too. If, if people want to reach out to me directly, they can feel free to do so. I recognize recognize a lot of names on here. They probably have my email address. But if for some reason you want to direct or me to answer certain questions, just email Katie and she can get them to me too as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And if, uh, if uh, you all have any ideas as to um, um, any specific questions about telecommuting that you'd like us to uh, address in a similar format, like, you know, using uh, the live virtual discussion, uh, let us know if there are other topics that you'd like to uh, like for us to address um, in, you know, using this, let's face it, we're not going to do any in-person events for quite a while. So um, that is a using Zoom, it, it, that is a, a, a reasonably good way to, to share a message and, and have some uh, have some dialogue um, in, in a virtual setting. So um, any ideas, any requests, uh, please do let us know. And, yeah, I'll uh, be we'll sending out a, um, a survey tomorrow morning to everybody um, to go over this and give your feedback and also have a question in there asking for any other topics that anybody um, is interested in hearing about. So definitely would love to hear that from everybody. Great. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Tracy. And thanks so everyone much. else for calling in. Yes. Have Thank a great day, everyone. Bye.